think that that's the main reason we don't have new energy, really different energy? That's the reason. You know, it took such a short time for the Manhattan Project. And can you believe what the world would be now if Hitler had gotten the atom bomb first? The United States was able to get that in a record time to beat Hitler. And that's why you you and I have our freedom today. If we had spent the taxpayers' money and the time of the scientists to find alternate energy, we wouldn't need oil today. I believe that. Because we had 40 years and we had a lot of talented, experienced scientists in this country. You submitted your discoveries about Kepler's third law, your papers, and your book to many journals. How was it received so far? I didn't get the reception that I accepted at the beginning, but it wasn't all rejection either. They were some people like John Lear and the editor of Physics Essays, Dr. Panarello, He doesn't reject papers because they are against the accepted dogma. He looks at the data. So I have gotten two papers accepted in physics essays. And uh, I have my book in 89 libraries in the United States and around the world if you check the Internet. I just got an order from Amazon.com for two more books two days ago. As this book was published 17 years ago. You know, you don't usually sell books that are that old. You know, John Lear got a lot of people interested in the talk shows in Portugal or in Spain. And you wouldn't know about me without John Lear. Exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, and I got emails from some people, they tell me they wouldn't know about me without John Lee, that he talks about my work. So I'm still selling the book. So some people are looking to truth. Science is supposed to be based on truth. Of course, the people who are selling textbooks, they don't want my work because They have to change everything in their textbook. They are teaching the children all of these things that in my book has been shown to be wrong. Now, as we spoke, you talked about the fact that your work is 98% or 99% right. Is that correct? You know, when you work in science, you get the data and then you get the statistic data to see how much... uh, if, if it is the relationship of two things, if it's 95%, yes. you say it's significant. If it is 99% or more, you say it is highly significant. Now, this last paper that I gave you, the relationship between the eccentricity and the change of, uh, that's Kepler's second law, is 99.75%, so it's highly significant. Now, these people with gravity probe B, after five years of finagling with data that were completely insignificant, they say it's 19%. One nine, 19%. 19%. Percent. Okay. And that's statistically not significant. If I was working in biochemistry and I came up with my data, a relationship that was only 19%, my professor wouldn't send that data for publication because he would tell me it's not significant. And these people, they have wasted $760 million of the taxpayers' money. And after five years of finagling with the data, they are saying that the frame-dragging prediction of Einstein is correct. How, in science, do you confirm it's statistically correct? How do you go about doing that? In statistics, you plot one set of data against the other set. When I was a student, we used 
to work this out ourselves, but now it's very easy. You have software that does everything for you and gives you a percentage? The statistical data, yeah, everything. The thing is the relationship. If you have something, right, and then going in certain direction with something else, then you plot this. And if the data are up and down, it's not significant. If these data are all on a line, they are very highly significant. So these people for frame dragging. What's frame dragging? Einstein said that the mass changes the space time. It's crazy. There is no such a thing as space time, four dimensional space time that they have invented. Einstein introduced four-dimensional space-time. And now, to fit these other people with the string theory, they have come up with 19 or 20 different dimensions, wormholes, dimension. To me, it's incredible. You, you have three dimensions of space, X, Y, and Z, And the time is something else. Einstein has come up with the four-dimensional space-time. So he says that this four-dimensional space-time is bent around mass, and that is what is causing gravitation. So we don't understand gravity at all. No. My sincere opinion is that this is just a waste of taxpayers' money. Do you think there are other dimensions? No, I believe in three space dimension. Okay. And the time is something else. We don't have a four-dimensional space time. The time we measure with clocks, the three dimension of space, X, Y, and Z, we measure with a meter. We can measure time with the space. Don't you think we made up time? Time is made up. It's man-made. What do you think? Time is measured by clock. So it's human-made. Space human is made. measured with meters. So gravitational force of the sun, which I'm going to read. This is a pre-interview. The basic premise is what? The basic premise of my book is that Kepler's third law is the law of gravitation. And... The correct interpretation of Kepler's third law is that gravitational force is equal to acceleration times the area, and there is no mass in it. Kepler's third law doesn't have a mass in it. I have presented in my book lots of evidence from recent data. Newton didn't have the data, and even Einstein didn't have. These are the most precise recent, accurate data. And I have gotten very high statistically significant relationship for the equation of the gravitational force, which is equal to acceleration times the area. I have based my conclusion on the most accurate and recent data. Do you think that if you were a male, you would be heard differently? It has something to do also the fact that I'm home, I'm not a professor at the university, but then if I was a professor at the university and I wrote this book, I get fired. Why? That's the way it is. I know people who have gotten fired who oppose Einstein. I know a very experienced person who who worked at a very high position in the U.S. Naval Observatory, he opposed Einstein's relativity, and he lost his job. So the fact that I was able to do that is because my husband supported me. If I had a job and I needed a job, I couldn't write this book. The editors of the mainstream journals they don't accept anything that does not support the accepted dogma. It reminds me of Darwin. When people come in with archaeological evidence, 
that goes